Hey everybody, this is Scott. Welcome back. I've got another art video for you today. Uh, I've been kind of experimenting with the length of these videos. Uh, the first couple I did were longer, and then uh, I thought maybe that was too long and people might lose interest, so I started pumping out some like really short ones, like two and three minutes. But uh, the problem with the, the two minute videos is that they're, they're not getting any views on YouTube. They're, they're some of my like lowest viewed videos on the YouTube channel. So I'm wondering if it has something to do with YouTube's algorithm. They just don't propagate and, and, and send out the videos that are really short. So uh, this is, I'm trying to do kind of a mid-length one. This will be about 10 minutes. This is a uh, Rick and Morty blank sketch variant that I'm doing. Uh, it's a birthday gift. Uh, an old friend of mine uh, from high school, his, his son is now graduating high school himself. And uh, he's just turning 18, so this is kind of a combination graduation and birthday gift. Uh, he's a big fan of both Rick and Morty and Game of Thrones. What teenage boy wouldn't be, right? And uh, so I decided to do a mashup of uh, Rick and Morty and, and Game of Thrones. Uh, so I've, I've already got the sketch on the, the cover here. And my inspiration was the original... Uh, promotional poster for the Game of Thrones TV series uh, where it shows Ned Stark sitting looking exhausted sitting on the throne leaning on his sword and so I, th I kind of drew Rick in that pose uh, on the Sword of Thrones or excuse me the, the Throne of Swords and uh, and then placed the other characters around him uh, so I've got here Morty as Tyrion Lannister I've got Summer as Sansa Stark Jerry is Jon Snow, and Beth is Daenerys Targaryen. Uh, so, um, the one thing I, I really encountered for the very first moment I started putting on the markers on this one is just the crappy paper quality of, of this, this blank cover. Um, I have heard in the past that really the quality uh, varies from publisher to publisher. And the ones I've done before from Marvel have been pretty good. They've taken the markers really well. Uh, but this paper is just crap. Uh, I started laying down the colors. And the colors just started bleeding everywhere. And they didn't go down smooth. And so they're, they're, it's, the color is the marker is like bubbling up on the surface of the, the paper. I don't know. I just... It doesn't make sense to me. It, 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 and I know the, the publisher of this comic book is a, is a small press, but... I mean, they, they, they cheaped out on the paper, and if you're going to do a blank sketch cover variant, you have to at least use materials that are going to, you know, take custom artwork on it and, and, and be suitable for drawing on. Um, but anyway, that's my main complaint about this one. Um, uh, the first thing I did was I, I laid down the, the greens of the uh, portal. And then I started laying down the light colors, the skin tones, and the, the lighter hair colors. And the reason I laid down those colors first, uh, rather than doing the black lines first, is because I'm worried about the, the markers bleeding. I've had a problem in the past where if I go in with the microns, I lay down all my line work, and then I start coloring skin tones in lighter colors, then the markers just bleed and it just ruins those lighter uh, pastel type colors. So in this instance, if I can put down the lighter colors first, lay those down, and then come in with the marker afterwards, uh, then it minimizes the smearing, uh, and the art just looks better overall. So you can see here I'm just kind of putting in fine, uh, the fine detail, drawing in the, uh, the swords, and then going in with the micron and putting in the more the detailed line work. I'm not as worried about the color smearing on the um, the costumes themselves. As you'll see as I'm laying down the costumes, because I'm doing Game of Thrones characters, everybody's sort of dressed in uh, grays and earth tones. Uh, same as the, uh, the Throne of Swords here. It's just a lot of, you know, metal, metallic gray, rusted colors and uh, if 
you know, uh, honestly, if the micron markers bleed a little bit, it's not going to make any difference because it's all the same color anyway. Uh, one of the challenges by, by doing this, as you can see as I'm trying to add colors in, into the, the swords there, is that because it's a lot of gray on top of gray on top of gray, it's hard to get any depth in the artwork. And the artwork by its nature is a very flat coloring. It's that, you know, it's a very simple animation style. Uh, so it's kind of a challenge to uh, get any sort of depth uh, when, when you're using a, a lot of the same color and a relatively simple color scheme. Uh, you uh, you want to make the uh, artwork uh, easily readable by the viewer. And uh, it's just a challenge where you've got something simple like this, but it's uh, a lot of the same tones on top of each other. Uh, it's just you want to make it visually interesting. One of the another challenge with this one was just uh, adopting the art style. I, I wasn't familiar with Rick and Morty at all when I first started this. I actually started watching the cartoon uh, while I was drawing it. And uh, I had to figure out, you know, how to draw these characters and make them look like the actual characters. And for somebody who's not an artist, that, that may seem odd because, again, it's an animation style that's fairly simple. But uh, I don't typically draw in this style. And so I had to figure it out. I had to figure out how to draw these characters and make them look like, you know, instantly recognizable as the characters. Uh, not just get down the the body types, you know, just the little things like how, uh, you know, how skinny the arms are, how long the legs are, things like that. Facial expressions were a big thing for animation because with, with animation like this, uh, everything is boiled down to very simple details and there's a real economy of line. And if you don't get that just right, then the character is going to look off. Uh, so I really wanted to nail the uh, to characters. So like I said, I was streaming Rick and Morty uh, while doing this, while planning it out anyway. Uh, and I was able to come up with a good sketch, and then I put that sketch down on the, uh, the comic book ahead of time before I started uh, video uh, recording this, this color work here. And the other thing too is I had to figure out, you know, corresponding what Game of Thrones characters, you know, each Rick and Morty character was going to be. And then I had to figure out, you know, how to make the Game of Thrones character instantly recognizable. Uh, particularly since, you know, from season to season, the Game of Thrones characters change their outfits. You know, they're, they're not wearing the same costume throughout the entire series. So I had to, like, pick a version of each character and uh, try and figure out a way to make each one of these people instantly recognizable, both as the Rick and Morty character and the Game of Thrones counterpart which was a bit of a challenge. Um, and just little things like, you know, uh, putting that worried face on Jerry. Uh, Jon Snow always seems to have that, you know, worried face as well, uh, if you watch the TV show. Uh, you know, Morty as Tyrion, you know, always has a angry scowl on their faces. So I try to correspond, things like that. Now I'm just, uh, I've got the, the main body coloring down and the costumes uh, all rendered out. I'm just going in and laying down the, the bottom step there and the shadows. And really trying to just lay down the color without it bleeding everywhere. And this is just a matter of adding in, trying to add in more shadows and depth. Uh, coming in with some finishing details. And now I'm just taking the Micron and I'm just kind of going around and detailing the portal. Uh, initially I wasn't planning on doing that, but again because of the green color was just bleeding all over the place, it wasn't really reading as that dimensional portal swirl like I wanted to. So I'm just coming in with the, uh, with the Micron and adding some final details. Uh, 
here I'm putting in some white paint here and there, just kind of finishing touches on the piece. And I just add my signature and it's done. Well, thanks for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.